is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 15th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fabulous, fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. The mix is really coming from the Russell, which is up seven points. The other U.S. indices trading to the downside. For example, the Dow's off 59 points. The S&P's down 22. NASDAQ 151. Semis are off 11. Trendy's down 25. New York Stock Exchange down just slightly. Gold's off two bucks. Silver's up 48 pennies. Lights recruit is flat. Natural gas is off four cents. 30 year treasury printed out at 118.20. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside, Madrigal Pharmaceuticals, a $35 move, 14% there. Coming Zinc, a $9 move, or 3%. NVIDIA's up nine bucks. Watsco is up $8, 2%. Intuitive Surgical, an $8 move. That's a 2% move as well. Getting hammered to the downside, it is Adobe. Down 78 bucks, 14% move. Booking Holdings off 42, a little over 1%. Service now is down 37. Alta Beauty is down 32. J-Bill Inc. is down 23. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin our day by taking a look at the equity future contract. So let's take a look at the, uh, the four horsemen out here. Upper left is the ES Mini. Let me turn off the uh, trend lines. You can see prices traded in the trend line. That's not really what we want to focus on at the moment. What we want to take a look at is the new profile that is attempting to form. In fact, let me just turn off price right here. There we go. So you can see this profile. I don't know whether this is going to hold or not. This is different than the profile we're going to take a look at when we go take a look at my white background chart. But right now, you still use both. You still want to notate this information. This profile has been changing all morning long here on my black background charts. It's been pretty steady for the last, uh, well, it looks like for the last couple hours on my white background chart. Support, 52 between 52.12 and 52.01. Resistance up at the 52.57 level. Let's go ahead and turn price back on. No other new profiles. When we take a look at the NQ, Let's open this up. Let's turn off those trend lines. So when price closes above a bearish structured profile, it doesn't matter what the time frame is, when price pulls back, if it's just a counter trend move, what I have learned, what I have experienced is that where price will find support is at that center line, which is 18.028. We've seen a low of 18.029 this morning. Watch 18.028 come the end of the trading session. Why? Because if price closed below that, odds favor that we see move down to 17.761. There's no new profiles inside the uh, Dow, uh, the YM out here, nor is any new profile inside the Russell. What's transpired so far in the case of the uh, Dow and the Russell price is really just testing the top of its profile uh, and the uh, Dow, the Russell 2000 also testing the top of its profile. So let's go from here and then let's move over to the white background charts. And we're going to focus in on the ES mini because we that's the one that's got the new profile that is formed. So we'll switch over to those charts. I'll be there momentarily. The upper left hand corner is where you're going to want to kind of focus your eyes. In fact, what I'll do, I'll just simply expand out the chart. Let's do that. Now we can see here that this new profile has the re same resistance level, 52.57. Oops, go live, hold on. There we go. 
Okay, so 52.57, that's steady. So you know that is solid resistance. Of course, that is the all-time high. That's the high from the trading session of March the 8th which we're still trading inside that candle as we speak right now. The support area here is 51.67. So remember, on the other set of charts that we were looking at, we had a support at 52.01. This one is 51.67. Uh, so you use them both. 51.67, I think, is real key area. Now, the interesting thing here, if you notice from a profile standpoint, so we're talking profile folklore here, is that this profile formed above the prior profile. That tells us that from a profile standpoint, the trend is still in place, and that trend is to the upside. In the case of the ES Mini, we do not have a topping pattern for its daily time frame. We do on weekly time frame, and that's a TD9 count pattern. I don't have the weekly chart here to show you, but I will switch over to those so we can take a look at those for each of the four equity future contracts. Now, we look at this multi-set of time frames out here. We can see a 15-minute TD9 count bottom that has taken price right up to resistance. Not exactly what you want to see if you're a bull out there. Even though it's a 15-minute chart, it's still telling us that uh, this could turn down could absolutely turn down. If we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, I don't know if there's an A to B equals CD, but let's take a look at it. Let's open up this chart, see if there's a... I'll try to open it up. Yeah, so let's see. I see A to B. Let's just see how well this measures out here. Let's go, this is going to be approximate. I'm not trying to get it exact to the tick. I just want to see, generally speaking, because that's really the way the ABC program works anyway. So now let's pull this back, and you have... I don't know. I don't think that's enough to tell me that this is completed to buy the D point pattern. So instead, what we have on a uh, six, a 30 minute time frame is price consolidating with inside its profile. Its resistance level is what it hit. So certainly you want to respect that. That resistance out there and that profile is up at the 5202 area. And that's on the 30 minute time frame chart. Let's go ahead and slide this back down, see what else we see out here. We can see that uh, on a 240 and a five hour time frame chart, Price pulled back. These have this uh, the 240 four hour time frame chart as Rosemont indicator top. Took price right back to its breakout level of support of 5176 and a quarter. So I would say this: we can see 5176 is a key area of support. You got this new profile 5167. So it's going to be a close below 5167. It's going to tell you that we've got a profile change in trend signal inside the S&P 500, or that we may, because you still need to see two consecutive closes below that area. Let's go flip over and take a look at the daily and weekly time. Time frames for each of these here just to kind of wrap this piece of it up uh, if I could find that daily weekly here we go so the bottom portion is the uh, weekly time frame you can see a new profile inside the ES mini at 5122 so you got that 5122 on the weekly and you've got 5167 on the uh, daily so what does that tell you that says if we see a close below 5167 we know where price is likely headed to 5122. That's a beautiful thing. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart for the NQ, we've already been through that. The weekly's got a TD9 count top, and price right now is pulled back into its buy zone. That's right. So on the daily time frame, you have the NQ hitting its counter trend area where we'd find support. And on the weekly time frame, you have price that's pulled back into the buy zone. What's the buy zone? It says buy zone because the center of this profile, this is a bullish structured profile, closer to the bottom than to the top. So this tells you you got strong support between 17.945 and 18.070. On a daily time frame for the Dow, nothing here really to report. On a weekly time frame, it's got weekly profile support down at 38.722. And uh, you got a new profile that's trying to form right now today inside the Russell. That area of support will be at 20, 27.60. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. 
And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Attention all opening call subscribers. Next Tuesday, March 19th, Basil Chapman will be hosting a live 90-minute webinar for all subscribers. From 4 to 5.30 p.m., Basil will take subscribers through an educative journey, giving insight into how he will approach this volatile market. Basil Chapman's opening call newsletter has a 30-day money-back guarantee for all first-time subscribers, and all subscribers get access to his trove of webinar archives, so you have nothing to lose. Go to the newsletters tab of tfnn.com and sign up today. We'll see you March 19th. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Out there, you've got the Dow down 83, S&P's off 23, the Nasdaq is off 153. Let's go out to our first caller. It is John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thank you for holding. How are you doing today? You know, I'm doing very well. Uh, how about Excellent. yourself? Um, yes. And yep. uh, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. I apologize. No problem. <laughs> no, no problem. Taiwan Semiconductor. Let me try to let me try yes. to help you out. Is it T TSM? Is that what we want to take a look at uh, today? I do, uh, and a very specific question for you, Steve. Perfect. Uh, the stock peaked last week up at 158. We've fallen yes. off now, what, 10% or so? My question to you is um, if you could use your tools and tell me where your first buy uh, would come in and why, and if it goes lower than that, where would be your second entry point, you know, considering uh, risk involved? Uh, I, uh, I'd just like to get your view on those two particular questions, if I could. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the daily time frame chart shows that when price made that high uh, last week, it had formed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And then the following day, a new profile appeared. And price right now, John, is sitting on that profile support level, which is at 136.53. I've got 136.59 printing on my uh, chart right now. So this is support. This could be one area that, where you would take a look at a buy. So it's one place to consider would be right now from a daily perspective. If we see a close below this profile level, Obviously, I'd like to see two close, but if we do close below 136.53, then the hint, John, would be that as far as where price would head to, I would say would be approximately 127.76. I say approximately because that takes us to our weekly time frame chart, which shows that a TD9 count top is going to go ahead and form today. That pattern will complete tomorrow. But since we're below last week's open, as we speak, odds favor that this, uh, you know, that the TD9 count high is in place for Taiwan Semiconductor. 
And typically, John, when you get that pattern, price will pull back to support. But the daily right now is overriding the weekly chart unless the daily chart fails. Does that make sense, uh, what I've shared with you so far? You know, it's perfect. I, uh, I had this hunch that something would pop up on your chart we're giving those exact answers. So uh, okay. 136.50 and uh, 127.70, I think those are uh, yeah. the uh, answers to my two questions. Uh, neither you nor I can predict the future, sure. but uh, the parameters are clear, so that's all I need, and I thank you. You bet. You bet. Thank you for the call. That was John in uh, Philly out there. And I want to thank everybody that called in uh, this week, uh, really every week, for sure. Yesterday was such a fun show to do. Uh, you know, so I just it just, I just I just love that piece of it. That's that's for me. That's the best thing of doing this is the interaction that we have, whether it's inside the Tiger's Den, whether it's on the phone, whether it's by email. You know, it's just really fun. Really. For me, it's just fun and great. With regard to Taiwan Summit Country, just, just for anybody else that was listening, when we see something that's at support, or potential support. What we like to see is some kind of bobbing pattern on an intraday chart. So here's a 30 minute time frame chart for that, which we don't see. I don't see as a bottom pattern out there. I'll put up the uh, 65 minute chart. Now, folks, when I take a look at individual equities, cash indices, things of that sort, we have a 390 minute trading day. So I like to use time frames where each bar is equal. And that's why I use a 65-minute, not a 60-minute time frame chart out here. Here on the 65-minute uh, chart, I don't see a uh, bottom. So the only thing that you've got at your back right now is that uh, daily level of profile support, which is, a, which is a strong level. But at least we know we don't have right now that bottom to, to necessarily take us in to that trade. I didn't go take a look at a 10-minute or a 5-minute. Uh, but, uh, John, uh, thanks for that call. Uh, I want to get back to some requests that came in yesterday. I just I had that that last two minutes of the show. And it was such a flurry. I don't know if I got to everything. And I apologize if I'm re restating something, redoing something. But Nicholas had written in and was looking at uh, LNG. And, um, and, and if you take a look at the daily time frame chart for LNG, we can see that this has a slightly bullish structure daily profile. And that suggests because price closed above the center of that profile yesterday, it's traded above it again today. We're trading above yesterday's high. What the daily time frame chart is suggesting to you or I is that buyers want to push this up to resistance. Resistance on a daily time frame for LNG is the top of its profile. That's at 162.48. I think that is likely where price is going to go target. The reason why I say why it's likely to target is because of the weekly chart. So, Nicholas, if we look at the weekly time frame chart, this had a TD9 count pattern that had formed out here. It can actually complete the week of February 16th. The low on that was 155.07. Last week, price closed at 154.95. It negated that pattern. Lo and behold, it looks like you're going to get a bull sash candle at the uh, close today. That will confirm an A to buy the D point pattern. So you've got you've got uh, um, kind of a bullish pattern on the week, definitely bullish pattern on the weekly. You're inside a bullish structured profile above the center of that level on the daily time frame. The monthly got back towards support, which was at 151.53. So LNG does look like it wants to trade higher out there. Now, if we look at consecutive moves higher and lower out here, we want to take a peek at that. Just understand it's dancing steps we can see that we had one two we had one two bar move higher another two bar uh, another five bar move higher so that five bar move higher back here on the trade day of march the 11th that was another signal that this has upside momentum to it you typically on a counter trend move you don't get more than four consecutive rallies to the upside we can take a look at this coming off of the high from back here in uh, december here's a two bar rally your first one here's a three bar rally and then we got to this four bar rally that was the extent of it but once you get to five and six and seven it really tells you about where that where where price is trying to push to does it always work like that no you got to pay attention to candles uh pay attention to the you know the the simplest of all technical uh tools out there look at the bottom of the prior candle and the top of the prior candle as a candle that you're currently in, done anything to that? Is it traded below? Is it trading below the low? Is it trading above the high? It's just a helpful, very subtle, but very helpful piece of information. So we're up now for three days out here. Um, you know, I'd expect a retracement or a pullback uh, within the next three days or so inside of LNG. But overall, it looks uh, pretty uh, bullish to uh, uh, when we take a look at Stevie's charts out there. So, Nicholas, I uh, hope that that helped you out. Uh, LB wanted to take a look at uranium. URA is a ticker symbol out here. 
I believe it was long term. So even if we did cover it yesterday, Lee, what we've got out here is we've got a new profile that is formed today. This profile has formed with inside the prior daily profile. This may not be the message you wanted to hear, but the message is that the consolidation should continue. So the consolidation, to a certain extent, I would say, would be from the low of uh, February 26, down at about 26.53. And the top of that consolidation really is going to be the high of this bearish engulfing candle. Uh, that would be up at 29.46. Uh, obviously, I don't know that price will get up to that level out here because you've got profile resistance at 28.65. But the important message for you this morning is you have a new profile forming with inside the prior profile that says expect and anticipate a uh, sideways consolidation out there and that's really what I see I like on the weekly chart is really supporting that idea as well the reason is because it's trading with inside that bullish structure profile and it's above the center line just above that center line we come back to this break hey I need more requests out there some assistance please but we'll take a look at XPEV and VFC those are the only two that I've got left uh, if I don't have any more we'll go take a look and try to study the uh, uh, the whole Holdings with inside the GDX. Try to get a feel for what's going on there. See Roads with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. 
Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we're taking a look at ticker symbol XPEV. I think it's a Chinese... Uh, I'm not sure what it does out here, but uh, we did have a request to take a look at it. So what I can share with you, and we don't really – I don't focus on the gaps on this because those are uh, currency translation uh, issues out here. So it really makes it kind of difficult to, to, tr to truly put some good technical analysis on this. But what I can share with you is that price right now is trading above the top of a, a bear structured profile that formed a couple of days ago, 960. As long as price can stay above, I'd say, 943, uh, then we should see move up towards that 1048 level. 1048 was tested earlier in the week. That 1048 level is a TD nine count breakdown resistance area. Support is down at $8.23. Now, I like the weekly time frame chart. Here's the good news and the bad news about the weekly time frame chart. The good news is... That just has a TD nine count bottom. That TD nine count bottom completed the week that ended February second. The bad news is this thing has rallied right up into that red oscillator and change line. It's within inside its profile, but it truly is at resistance. This both got to the top of that profile at 1066, and it closed below this 1015 level. Is going to suggest that price could get back towards that 852 923 level. First, you watch 943, though. 943 is a key level on the daily time frame for XPEV out there. So thank you for that request. I believe we have a caller on the line. We've got Roger in Boulder, Colorado. Roger, thanks for calling. Thanks so much for holding. How are you this morning? Wonderful. Thanks for asking. Uh, thank you so much, Steve, for uh, helping all of us. My pleasure. Guiding through these days. My pleasure. Yeah, I was going to ask you um, regarding... Um, the entry level for entry for uh, Adobe. I have uh, a 445 price in mind, and there's several. One is 200-day um, moving average is around that area, 127.4 or 2 percent. Safe number is there. What's your opinion on that? Uh, and also the the three-day rule. I have to wait a little bit. Got it. Okay. So I, you know what today is doing. Today has generated a new pattern for Adobe. And that pattern is going to be the A to B. It's going to really two patterns have been triggered. The first pattern is an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, I'm going to do that formula on my other screen so I can give out the accurate numbers. Normally, I just kind of uh, uh, guesstimate it here and, and start to draw them in like I did over on this chart here for the weekly time frame. But that A to B equals CD pattern is going to first get us down, Roger, to the 475 level. Now, what I want you to notice here is I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually kind of draw it in on the daily time frame here just so you can kind of see it so that I can make another uh, point. And it's a really important point here. And that is the point I'm going to show you is that I would expect this to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside. So let me just finish drawing this in here. Let me move this over. So there's, there's a couple of different things about the A to B equals CD pattern that can really help us to kind of judge where price might be headed to. And one of those is, one of those is the retracement of that B to C leg. In this case here, this retracement was a 52% retracement. Anything less than a 0.618 increases the odds of doing more than a one to one A to B equals CD. That's the first thing. The second thing is how you come off of that C point. If you come off of that C point, and that was actually formed two days ago on March 13. If you come off of that with a wide ranging bar and a gap to the downside, all you have to do is mentally, Roger, paint that in out there. This is one of the widest ranging bars that we've seen in Adobe in quite some time out there. When you have a wide ranging bar, that's another thing that tells you you're likely to do more than a one to one A to B equals CD pattern. So the one to one, as we identified, came up to about 475.11. Was that what you you mentioned a $400 figure? What was what were those $400 figures? I, I did I didn't jot them down. 4 445 is a 100 1.27. Got it. Okay. I agree so, it has to be more than one to one. Yes. And so actually the interesting thing is that that four so I'm going to switch over to the black background charts because there I've got the A to B CD pattern drawn in. And so the second level the 1.272 expansion is that 445 level and then you got 406. Now the cool thing about the A to B equals CD pattern is that once you get below 475 or you get close to 475 you'd be looking for some type of bullish reversal candle. And when you get that bullish reversal candle that would be my way of this pattern confirming that it is at least attempting a bottom. 
So that's the cool thing about this A to B equals CD. When I switch over now back to my white background charts, I had mentioned, Roger, there were two signals that were triggered this morning with this morning's gap to the downside. That second one is that it triggered a Rosemontum indicator bottom. This is black diagonal line. That, too, needs a bullish reversal candle. So what this tells me is even though I went through that whole and wasted your time on that A to B equals CD pattern, the truth of the matter is, if we get a bullish reversal candle before it even gets down to that level, that could be telling us about a bottom. So there's two patterns that really you and I would need to manage here to understand the message of the market for Adobe. Does that make sense? Right. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Because usually I, I lose you by that second syllable. So that I, I think Adobe's giving you a gift to the extent that you weren't in it, because if you're in it, not such a gift today. But with regard to those trying to get back into it, monitor the A to B equals CD pattern. Look for bearish, a bullish reversal candle. Know the roads meant to indicator signal out there. And then look to the intraday for some type of additional bottom signal as well. If I look at the I've got the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts up here. The monthly chart is not over, but price right now is testing monthly level of support. So we're halfway through the month, a close below 491.33. And even though we're trading below that, so we know we're trading below a support level out there, kind of adds to this idea that we should expect this to continue to move lower. But we're trading below support daily, weekly, and monthly as we speak right now. The last piece of information I can share with you is if Adobe really falls apart, its next level of support that I have at the moment would be 318.60. But we don't have anything to suggest that it's getting down there just yet. Okie dokie. I see. Oh, thank it, you so is, much. Is, uh, yeah. uh, that, that's, very, that's very informative. I really appreciate that. Also, if, I, if you have a few minutes, um, take a look at uh, Marvell. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it together. Uh, so MRVL, what are you doing with Marvell? Are you just looking for an entry? Uh, or are you? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to add to it. Okay. All right. So in the case of Marvell, Marvell confirmed a Rhodes indicator top about six, seven days ago. Did it on uh, March the 8th when it generated that uh, bearish separating line candle out there, bearish candle. We're trading now below support. Price is trading into a swing point. So let's go take a look at the volume. The swing point that I'm referring to, Roger, was from the trading day of February 20th. The volume on that was 12 million shares. Yesterday, we traded down into it with 21 million shares because we traded down to that swing point with volume it was telling us that we should get back down there and test it today we've tested it and so far it's been a rejection but what's the volume the volume today on this is 6.5 million so we're at about an 18 million share day give or take 17 18 going into 12 million even though this could be a rejection of that swing point it wouldn't be a buy for me the buy could be at 59.95 i'm not saying that it can't can't be a buy. I'm saying that for me because we're testing that swing point with volume. Odds favor that it's going to get back down there again and test it. Ah, I hear the music in my ear. Roger, can I ask you to uh, hold on? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, can I ask you to hold on? We'll finish taking a look at Marvell sure. as soon as we get back. Perfect. Sure. See Rhodes with TFNN. Folks, we're going to go back out to Boulder, Colorado in about three or four minutes. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So, Roger, during that break, I went ahead and uh, pulled up my daily time frame chart for Marvell. I went back about a thousand days. What I was looking for was a bullish run uh, inside this. Uh, just as, to, to, and what I, I had mentioned uh, uh, during the show so far today is that when we take a look, this is showing us consecutive closes to the upside. Those are in black numbers, and consecutive closes to the downside. Those would be in red numbers. What I want you to see here is after coming off the low from back in July of nineteen uh, of 2021 out here, we can see that any of the moves lower did not exceed a four bar move to the downside. Most of them were two or three bars. They didn't exceed a four bar move to the downside until we got to uh, uh, December 14th of 2021. We can see that moves to the upside. We saw several six day moves out there. So when we get beyond four to the upside, tells us that we're likely to continue to move higher. We get beyond four to the downside, we're likely to continue lower. Now let's fast forward to what Marvell has been doing here recently. You can see that yesterday was bar number five to the downside. It's not a guarantee, but it is a signal to you and I that Marvell may want to trade much lower for a period of time out there. So I wanted to certainly point that out to you. If we take that information and then look at the weekly time frame chart, what we're going to notice is that last week was a confirmation of Rhodes Mintum Indicator Top. It was confirmed with that bearish shooting star candle out there. Now, we did this has this has a weekly, by the way, weekly A to B equals CD pattern was also completed. That price projection was about 8031. So there are two patterns out there that identified the top. The important thing about the weekly chart right now, Raj, is that price is trading below that green oscillator and change line. So that's a level of support that has failed. We look to the next level of support, and that would be the top of the daily profile. What I would share with you on a weekly basis, if this is just a counter trend move and a large counter trend move to the downside, where Marvell would find support would be at the center line of that weekly profile. It really would be between the it would be between the range of 6115 to 6321. So as Marvell, let's assume that it pulls back to that area. The daily's got a breakout level of 5995. I believe it's around 5995 to 6115 is the area where you would be looking to add to your position out there. Now, as price gets down there, please call back. We'll go through and take a look at the uh, charts. If it starts taking off to the top side, starts closing above prior days, highs, and things of that sort, you know, call back as well. We can take a look at it. So I've thrown out a ton to you. Uh, are there some questions yes. that I can answer as well? No, no, that's definitely. Thank you so much for uh, enlightening us with this, uh, with Marvell. Uh, I should hold on a little bit longer. 
Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, we got about 16 inches of snow, so we can use some of that sunshine from Florida. Oh, perfect. Well, I, I, I know a good way to use the sunshine from Florida. How about a plane? Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You have a wonderful weekend. You bet. You too. That was Roger in Boulder, Colorado. Um, let's go over to where did I stop? I think we were taking a look at uh, XPV. Yeah, I think we're done with XPV. Let's go on to the next request. This was for VFC. This came in. And I did not write down who requested it, but here's what we do know about it. VFC, we take a look at this. It's trading into, let me just pull back just a tad more. Yeah, okay. It's trading into a daily swing point from back on February the 7th. That swing point generated a volume of 29 million shares. Yesterday, we moved into it with 10 million shares. Perfect. Has this tested the low? So the low of that swing point, 1444. Yesterday you got down and test, you got 1444 right to it. So it's really got a test and rejection of that swing point on lighter volume. Is that a buy? I wish it would have gone one penny below or one penny above, but it didn't do that. It did right to the T. So how do we analyze this? Well, the first thing we know is that you and I have a competitive advantage out here. We know where the sellers are at. They're still at 1477. Those used to be buyers, but they got trounced yesterday. It looks like those people have turned in one day from buyers to sellers. If price is able to close back about 1477, then we don't have a consolidate. We don't have a profile change in trend. But if we do close below that today, we do have a profile change in trend. What does that tell us? Steve, you get to the point already. But that would then tell us, and really the weekly chart is really signaling that to us at the moment, is that price should go target the lows from November of 2023. And those lows are down at about the 1285 level. Now, on a weekly basis, that swing point generated volume of 103 million. This week, we're coming in right now with 33 million. Quite low when we come take a look at the uh, volume metrics out there. But as long as price remains below that red oscillator and change line, that tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. And until that, until that message uh, changes, no way that changes the close above it, that's suggesting we head lower out there. And the daily's kind of emulating that, too, or suggesting that because price has found resistance at the bottom of that profile. So hope that helped out on VFC and XPEV. Nancy in the den, finally we get to some requests today, Stevie. It's about time. NVIDIA. Nancy is asking, is $900 in the cards out here? Well... Here's what we know. NVIDIA formed that beautiful Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Not beautiful if you were a bull because you didn't want to see that out there. It did that back on March the 8th. Now we've had five trading sessions. Those five trading sessions beginning on Monday. Monday, a new profile form, Nance. And that new profile is above the prior profile. So it profile standpoint is still bullish from a trend standpoint. But price is trading with inside that. That inside that is pretty balanced profile. In other words, the center pretty much, pretty much right smack dab in the center. So we can't use that bullish or bearish profile scenario. What we do know is price uh, has support at 821.60 and resistance up at 935.90. That's the second level of resistance. The next area of resistance up at 9. 9, 10, 26. So we've tested yesterday's low. We're trading inside the body right now of yesterday's candle session. Your question is, can this get to 900? If I look at the weekly time frame chart, I don't have a top out here. It does show a shooting star candle from last week. And even if I could find an A to B equals CD pattern, there probably is one. The problem is it was also a gap to the upside. If I were to fill in that gap, this would not be a shooting star candle. So I can't say that the weekly has got a, a top on it. What I can do, though, is come over and take a look at an intraday chart. So let's look at a couple of those. Here's a 65-minute chart. I don't see a bottom. I just see a consolidation. I don't think I'm going to get one on the 30-minute chart either. But let's just take a quick peek out here. Now, I don't have anything. Now, the 30-minute time frame chart, Nancy, as long as price can remain above 884.97, odds would favor that it wants to rally further. And so that could certainly get you up towards that 900 level out there. But if price closes below, I'd say 882, might be 882.50, then you're headed back to the 875, 870 level. So that's what I see when I take a look at the 30 minute, the daily and the weekly. I didn't mention the monthly. The monthly chart, by the way, is certainly bullish. And if we look at its dance steps out here, this is Nvidia. Let's see what its dance steps. We had two bar close to the downside. Um, I know it's still bullish. 
We still to the downside, NVIDIA, the largest move to the downside that we've seen coming off the lows back here in October has been a four bar move to the downside. So uh, not surprising to see a bounce today. The question is, is this just a one day bounce like it was back on March the 12th? I don't know. It shouldn't be. If this is bullish, you should at least get two days out of it. So I hope that helps you out, Nance. Thanks so much for writing uh, in and for your request and have a wonderful weekend. Uh, Brett wrote in. I didn't get a chance to read the message, but I know that he wanted to take a look at L a e s so let me punch those screens up here l a e s see if we can get uh, not k a e s that's not good no. l a e s see what information i might be able to give you in 15 seconds and then we'll go to the break and we'll come back and i'll make sure i do a thorough analysis of this and of dlr for marvin but when i take a look at l a e s right now it closed below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile yesterday it's trading below it right now it being the number of a buck 76. You get a second close below that. We'll try to figure out during this break where LAES may be headed to. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, well, folks. We got the stock charts up here for LAES. That is uh, Seal Square Corp. Uh, Brent in Martinez, California, wrote in and wanted to take a look at it. He's interested in areas where it might be a potential buy. So, Brent, let's take a look at at uh, what's going on right now today. First, uh, 
prices trading, two swing prices testing, two swing points. The first swing point that prices testing was from January 23rd. The high out there of that swing is a buck 66. The volume, 2.4 million shares. When price pulled back right here on the trading day of February 27th, that was a test of that swing point on what with 1.75 million. So 1.75 million was testing 2.4. That was a test and rejection on lighter volume. I want you to notice that was not a Stevie bottom signal or anything. In fact, price was below the profile on that trading day. That was a true uh, Tom uh, O'Brien test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. Can't bust them down. It tries to bust them up. Turns out we're at the same point in time right now today. We're below profile. We are testing that same swing point. Today's volume 477,000 shares. So even if we say it's 500,000, which it's not, for three hours of 1.5 million, you're still coming in with much lighter volume than 2.4. Now, Brent, this may just be a short-term trade versus some type of longer-term hold or something out there. But the answer to your question, based upon its pattern out here, is we should get some type of rally. I'd feel better about that if price got back inside its profile out there and closed the day back above 176. So from a trade standpoint, yeah, from, you know, investment standpoint no idea but you do have that test of swing points out there so hope that helps you out and as always thank you so much for your assistance this week uh, we had a last request coming in from Marvin. Marvin wants to take a look at DLR. Marvin, I don't have a chance to take a look at what you requested out there other than the symbol. Here's what I know. TD9 count top. Price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile right now. A close today below 141.88. Suggest to move to 136.07. Um that's its TD9 count breakout level. That's the daily time frame. The weekly chart has a Rosemontum indicator top that's going to go ahead and complete this week. That says that price should pull back into the area of 131.91 to 137.63. And we're going to complete a monthly TD9 count pattern here. So I say DLR likely to head lower. And I think 136.07 is the likely area. Folks, have a fantastic weekend. Thanks for all your assistance and help. Stay tuned. And I'll see you back here on Magnificent Monday. Be careful, folks.